well, hello, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Now, today I've often been uh, asked, uh, you know, interesting questions about youth and uh, anti-aging and uh, having vibrant health, and today I've asked a very good friend of mine to come along and uh, through her experience uh, we're going to answer some of those questions uh, that you've asked me in the past and um, if you get her answer tonight this dear friend of mine I'm sure she will be back so she is uh, Alison Heath and um, for over 25 years uh, I mean, she looks just 25, but uh, um, for over 25 years, uh, um, Alison has been showing uh, persons, including physicians, uh, how to turn back the clock. Uh, and, uh, you know, she has uh, three main secrets, uh, which she's going to expound, but she talks about, you know, oxygenating the body, and um, she talks about being joyful and so being in a, in, in, a, in, a, in a very good mood as two of those keys which I totally endorse. Um, Alison had some remarkable results on her own body, saved her leg from amputation, um, got rid of or controlled two medically incurable diseases and um, she's the best person to tell you her story. So. I, I want to start with uh, Alison, um, you know, telling us uh, how, how did she discover these secrets to living fully and vibrantly? Alison, welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I discovered these things by pure accident. So I wasn't looking, I was not searching for the, the holy grail of youth or anything like that. I was a party animal, I was enjoying having so much fun with my life and I, didn't, I thought I was invincible the way that everybody that's young does. So my real wake up call came when I was in your beautiful country and there was a man who was leaving a club and he was hopped onto his 650 motorcycle, pulled out and started doing something called bupping, where they pushed their hips out far and he lost control of his motorcycle. It went careening across the road in front of a car and he lost total control. It went off the road. I was walking five and a half yards from the side of the road because my girlfriend had been killed a year earlier by a driver who was uh, stoned on drugs and so on. So I thought, I'm going to walk five and a half yards from the side of the road. Well, my friend was on the other side of the road, and he owned one of the businesses and, in Jamaica, and he saw this happen to me. And he ran across, he called for help, because he knew so many people. A van came and so on. And my leg just sprayed out. I looked down at my leg and I thought, oh, this is a very injured leg. But I didn't feel any pain at all. Nothing. Mm. And I heard a voice inside of my head. And it said, don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. This is just going to show you something. And believe it or not, I never worried. But the next instant, it was like, ah, oh, extreme pain. And then I went for two years, 17 operations, a year in a wheelchair, all kinds of things happening with the medical system. I'm grateful, infinitely grateful, that the medical system was able to save my leg. I had to fly back to Canada. It took six seats to get me back. Um, I was taken to the People's Hospital in Montego Bay. And in Montego Bay, uh, you know, the, the families bring the patients the food and so on and so on. And I was right beside the nurse's desk. I was able to call. I didn't know what year it was. 
I had no idea who the President of the United States was. I was in complete shock, but at the same time, I was able to call, make arrangements to get back home, make arrangements to be picked up, make arrangements to have a physician follow me there. It was really amazing how my brain split in two. And I started to realize once I was back in Canada and I was having all these operations and there was a non-union of the bone because there was so many infections in the marrow of the bone, four infections because the bones had broken out and they'd gone chit, 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 and they had dug into the pavement. So I was the cushion for the 650 motorcycle and it was really amazing because nothing would heal my legs. But I knew I didn't have to worry. I had been told that this was just going to show me something. And it was profound, the things that it showed me. All the people that I thought were the cool people and so on, when they would come to my room to visit me, and I was in isolation, so I had my own room, they turned out to be very shallow. And the people that I had thought were really boring people and so on, geeks or whatever you want to call them, they turned out to be fascinating people. They brought me books to read that were so deep and incredible and they would pack picnic lunches for me because I was allowed to go out of the hospital but not mix with patients. And I remember the first time I went to go out of the hospital. I was in my wheelchair and I was pushing myself along with my IV pole and the elevator door opened. This woman took one look at my leg and she went, Oh, and she fainted. She just dropped. And the nurses came to me. They said, you know, would you please cover your leg if you're going to go out of your room? I was so mortified. I thought, oh my goodness, I am uglier than Quasimoto. No one will ever like me again. Well, that turned out to be a fallacy too. And when my fascinating guests that I thought were, were, uninteresting would take me out for a picnic lunch we could go out past the parking lot of the hospital and there was a house that uh, was donated by a very wealthy family that had the large newspaper in Montreal and this large wealthy family had donated a house to some Buddhist monks and the Buddhist monks, they didn't, the family didn't want the inheritance tax. So the Buddhist monks would walk around in circles on this driveway. And I would be painting watercolor pictures of the house and sitting there by myself. I, it became my favorite place to go to heal. And I took no painkillers, nothing like this. And these monks would go around. Suddenly I would feel this energy, mm. this warm, enveloping love around me. I'd turn around and I'd look and sure enough, there would be a monk walking along with his head down, not looking at me, but just walking along in the circular driveway right beside me. It was really amazing. There were two uh, convents of nuns and so on praying for my leg to heal. There were all this energy coming in, energy coming in, energy coming in to help heal me. And yet, there was a non-union of the bone. And then one day, this man that I thought was so handsome came to visit me when I was finally back home. And he held out his hand and he said, here. And he handed me this, two little green pills. And I said, oh, no, no, no. I said, I don't even take painkillers. I'm not taking any of these drugs. He said, it's not a drug, it's a food. Well, I looked at him and he said, I eat it. And I thought, oh, well, and for some reason, I just took it because it was him. I put it in my mouth and I swallowed it without even water. And then he said, I'm going to put this in your fruit and vegetable drawers in your fridge. He had two big bags of these bottles of these pills. And he said, when you're finished, he tacked up an envelope on the side of my wall. And he said, you just put the money in the envelope and I'll come and collect it. And I went, oh. He's coming back, yes! So I was very happy. I started taking these pills. I had returned to university because there was no way that I could work with having operations all the time. Mm -hmm. So I was driving my car 
down the hill to go to the university and I had a big mechano set on my leg. I had a lot of pain, a lot of time, but I took no painkillers as I said. I'm driving down the hill and suddenly the clouds parted and it was like driving into a valley and there was a hill going up on the other side and I looked at the sunlight parting in the, as the clouds parted and the sun just beamed down and I thought to myself, wow, if I could put this food in the water of the world, I could end all wars. And it turned out that that food is three billion years old. And that's the food that learned how to do photosynthesis and gave life to our planet. So the fascinating part was that what happened when I ingested this food, my body was responding to nutrition that was an adaptogen. The way we think of herbs, special herbs that we take into our body that are adaptogens. These are intelligent foods that know what you might need, Andrea, versus what I might need. And they might be two very different things, but they give us what we need individually. So all of a sudden my brain was being fed. Well, this is a food that is the highest food in chlorophyll. And the interesting thing about that is if you think carefully, when you have a baby that's born, and if that baby is deprived of oxygen, say the umbilical cord is caught around it in such a way or something, that baby is born a blue baby. Right. It's blue because it's not getting the oxygen in its body. And when it doesn't get the oxygen, what, what are the symptoms? Brain damage. Why is there brain damage instead of lung damage or, or leg damage or liver damage? There's brain damage because the brain is the only organ in the body that doesn't have its own oxygen supply. So when it's deprived of oxygen, it dies immediately. Parts of it die off very quickly and brain damage sets in. So this is something to consider. You want to get as much chlorophyll as you can into your body because the chlorophyll molecule is the same structure as the molecule in your red blood and the interesting thing is that that molecule in your red blood is giving is is intaking oxygen and giving off carbon di carbon monoxide so it, uh, carbon dioxide so anyway it's 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 making an exchange between the center of those molecules, which is absolutely fascinating. Because this means that you are eating a food that is bringing, transporting oxygen to your brain. And you can actually take that food and you can put it under your tongue and completely skip the whole digestive process and go straight to the blood, through the blood-brain barrier. So that discovery its scientific name is Aphanazomenon Floss Aqua, which is a very big name. It's an, a fascinating food because it's part plant in that it can forage and find the best feeding areas. It's, can, you put that, can you put that name in the, in, the, um, in the chat box for me? Is this the name of the superfood that you had? Or? Yes. Yes, it is. It is. It's, um, what I'll do is um, the chat box will only be viewable to the people that are on this Hangout right now. So I will put a link where people can find out about this food. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the scientific name, Aphanazomenon Floss Aqua. It's three billion years old. And as I was saying, it's part plant, part animal, and part bacteria. And I started to say it's plant because it can forage. No, it's animal because it can forage. It can forage for the best feeding. It's plant because it creates chlorophyll. It is the plant that created chlorophyll on our planet and gave life to our planet. So if you look at a tree of life, it is the root. It's the very root of the tree of life. 
and it's extremely high in omega-3 fatty acids which is what we need we eat so much junk food and carbohydrates and meat and so on that we are getting a lot of acidity in our diet we're getting a lot of omega-6 fatty acids instead of omega-3 fatty acids so this is a super high food in that it's also a super strong protein it also has the same amino acids as the human brain so it is it's very interesting because we have little poles going on in our our brain where we're firing back and forth we have these synopsises they're called and we're firing messages back and forth well when those synopsises become dirty and jagged the little bridge across it doesn't fire properly we get depressed we have brain fog we have a bunch of different problems well this because of the amino acid chain which is what that what that bridge is made out of it has the same one so it just overlays on top of it and it fires back and forth very quickly and very easily so it's excellent for people that have had brain trauma and are recovering from brain trauma and so on it heightens your ability to use your brain in my case it was phenomenal my That's marks at school jump ten percent. What one moment? What I want to ask: What is a common name for this? Um, for it's this? a wild blue green algae. Uh, right, because I know many many of my um, listeners uh, could relate to the wild blue green algae. Could say they've seen it, uh, um, may never have tried it, but uh, your story is so fascinating and in fact you are so um, convinced and you, you emote so much confidence um, like you had an epiphany when you took that little pill. Um, are you saying that that was primarily uh, responsible for your healing or well, you because because of the rules okay we have rules in our society Mm -hmm. And one of those rules is that we cannot make a health claim about a food. We're not allowed to make a health claim about a food. But let me explain a little bit more about this food to you. So I went, okay, so, so the, 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 we've looked at how it's an animal in that it can forage to find better food we've looked at how it's a plant in that it does photosynthesis mm -hmm. and it's, it, it's, it's high in chlorophyll, omega-3 fatty acids, amino acids for the brain and then we looked at the fact I mentioned that it's also a bacteria so it has another scientific name which is cyanobacteria mm -hmm. and the bacteria aspect of it means that it can communicate across the globe instantaneously so there is no time distance boundary bacteria can communicate instantaneously across the planet with each other oh. and this is a very interesting thing because part of the problem that we're having with our medical association and traditional medicine that we are dealing with is that this medical model is has overused antibiotics and antibiotics are responsible for killing all the bad guys but they're also responsible for killing all the good guys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I learned something I started eating these foods but I had already been a vegetarian this was in 1987 and I had already been a vegetarian for many many years because simply because I didn't like meat I didn't like the taste of meat. It didn't. I had a uh, a low level allergy to meat. It was too heavy for me to digest. So when I would eat meat at school, I would be like comatose the next class. I would be almost like my eyes would be open, but my brain would be asleep, and so on. When I would have something that was lighter, like maybe a tuna fish sandwich or something like that, it was I was more awake and more alive. And then gradually, once I got my own apartment and I was able to start making my own food choices and so on, I steered naturally toward raw foods, vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, and so on. Much more so. Uh, you know, I, I go on and off. I don't believe in food wars. 
I really don't. I don't believe in these people that are holier than thou, and they make their proclamation, they put their their thing in the sand, and that's it. I, I, got, don't. You. I got you, Alison. There's so much we could we could go on. I, I wanted just to stick on um, on point because uh, you know you 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 talk about the blue green algae and you talk about its healing effect. It's oxygenating. Um, um, impact on on the brain in particular, but on the total body. Now, it, in healing, would you say that that was also uh, reversing the aging process, uh, um, anti-aging, and that uh, not only would this blue green algae, if you incorporate as a part of your regular diet, uh, um, would cause healing of the cells. Uh, as well as uh, the aging of the cells. Is, is that the, the um, not claim, but the assertion based on experience? And well, I cannot make any health claims, but I can tell you my story. Great, great. And yeah. so when I started eating these foods, I had this experience where my marks shot up 10% in university. It was like I remembered everything. Mm -hmm. I became very, very smart. Then the next thing that happened was that I went for my x-ray and there was some beginning of the formation of calcium. So my bone had turned the corner. Why did my bone turn the corner? Well, who knows? What had I done differently? I'd started adding this food into my diet. So I continued eating the food. Now, I had health conditions that I thought I had to live with for life. Okay, one of these conditions, I was told I would need to take lithium, a drug, forever and ever, amen, as long as I was alive. And this condition was called bipolar disorder. Manic depressive disorder was what it was diagnosed as way back in the day. And for me, I didn't go depressed. I just went very, very high and I felt like I had the world in my hands and I was a super being, I could do anything. But after 10 days of not sleeping or eating, you really do burn out. Mm -hmm. And it's a big crash that your body has afterward. So I gave it up. I thought if society will not allow this, I will give it up. And I faithfully, faithfully went for my blood tests every three months faithfully took my prescription and the thing was that when I was living and working in Cuba there was um, a, a great deal of heat and so on similar obviously it's a next-door neighbor to you yeah. and so on so the heat and and the lithium robbed my body in such a way that I became hypothyroid and I was told I would have to take Synthroid for the rest of my life so I was taking these medications without a second thought because believe me, being a hypothyroid was not a treat. Your hair falls out, your eyelashes, your eyebrows, you have no energy, you gain a great deal of weight, you're crawling up the stairs because you're so tired, you can barely walk. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very severe condition that it can be and in my case it certainly was. So I thought, okay, I've got to take these for the rest of my life. I will. I will. I will fit into society and I will be a good girl. So that was where my mind was. Well, gradually, without my even noticing it, when I would go for my blood tests, they were lowering the prescriptions. And I didn't pay any attention because in my brain, it was fixed in my brain, I had to take this forever. So I never even considered that there could be any other results. Then in the year 2000, I was working in systems and technology in the Royal Bank. I was running uh, an art gallery and I was uh, coaching individuals with health. And I had at that point finally decided that I would distribute, become a distributor of this wild blue-green algae because so many people were needing it. And I went to my doctor for my blood test and he said, I don't know what you're doing, but keep it up. We're going to take you off of Synthroid. And I said, really? I said, that's not possible. 
And he said, well, it's your case. You don't need it anymore. Mm. So I didn't need to have Synthroid. And I went, wow, this is incredible. But of course, I knew I would have to have lithium forever. So I continued, and I was perfectly adjusted. When I had my lithium, I didn't have any ups and downs. I didn't have to go to the hospital, nothing. So it worked perfectly for me. And then the next thing I knew, a few months later, he said, we're going to take you off of lithium. Awesome. I was shocked. I was terrified. I said, oh my god, no. I said, is this possible? He said, well, you don't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. So I thought to myself, okay. And I was very afraid because when I was diagnosed, the way they diagnosed me was I spent six weeks in the hospital, in the what you could call the loony bin. And believe me, it wasn't a very pleasant place to be. There was a very, very vicious man in there that picked on patients. He was an orderly, and he was very cruel. He broke my wrist the first day I went in there. And he was a very cruel man. He finally ended up getting fired for doing a horrible transgression, taking a, a girl patient to a strip joint, and he got caught. But he was a foul, evil human being in that environment, preying on people that were down and out. So I didn't want to go back. And I said, please, please, you know, will you test me every single month? And he said, well, yes, of course I will. He said, I can test you for Synthroid, but I can't test you for Lithium. There is no test for that. And he said, but I can do a visual check and so on, and I can see if your speech pattern has changed or if your sleeping patterns have changed, if your exercise has changed, and we'll be able to verify it that way. So I said, okay. And he did, and I was absolutely fine. And that was in the year 2000, and we're now 2014. Since that time, I have not had a Tylenol in my medicine cabinet. I have not had antibiotics, nothing. I just absolutely feel fantastic. And it was the beginning of a journey that led me to start adding more superfoods to my diet. It, mm. it, it, it changed the way that I ate. And believe me, my, my ways of eating and so on have undergone many changes, which is why I am against food wars, because it's a dialogue. It's about listening to your body. It's about learning to connect with your body. But there's also an emotional component to wellness as well. And this is something that I am fascinated with. I have never stopped working okay. on my emotional well-being. One, one moment, one moment, Alison, one moment, because you're, you're going right into the third component. Um, and somehow, I just want to be clear, because it seems as if the oxygenation, you know, was in fact part and parcel of the the cure, the cure, if we may call it, of of not only your leg, um, but your thyroidism and your bipolar disorder, as they call it. So I just want to to be clear that the same kind of food. Um, the same way that you were eating, um, because somebody, someone may call or may be saying, hmm, I really am only hearing one difference, one solution. You're, you're going on to your emotional health, and I can't even imagine what you're going to say, um, because if I was no longer depressed or dependent on lithium or any other nasty drugs, I would immediately be so happy. I would be joyful every single day, 365 day of the year. Um, but based on where you've gone so far, I know you have at least one more surprise for me. So well, it is all about... You really about want to pin me down. You want <laughs> to pin me down to I say... Want down yeah. To say, yeah. You want me to pin me down to say it was the blue-green algae that cured me. But in actual fact, 
we are a diamond okay look at yourself as a diamond and every facet of that diamond must be polished every facet of that diamond in order to sparkle so our health is like a ball and we make lifestyle choices where we push that ball down into a barrel of water and we submerge that ball but what does the ball want to do it wants to pop back up again mm -hmm. and that is our nature our nature is to be vibrantly healthy our nature is to be joyous our nature is to be connected with the divinity within connected to our source energy that is what God, if you'd like to call it, intended for us. God intended us to be beings of light and joy. And the fact of the matter is, is that you can easily return to your nature, return to what was intended for you in the first place, because that is your natural state. That's the way you're meant to be. So, so there are probably many, many ways to polish your diamond. Right. And I can't say one way is right or one way is wrong. But I do know that if you take a multi-directional approach, that is the best way that you can do it. So there are so many wonderful things that I could talk to you about. There's ubiquinol, which is a type of coenzyme Q10. And these are things I've been writing and teaching physicians. I had a regular column called The Natural Path in a magazine called MD News Magazine for physicians. Mm -hmm. And I was writing to inform physicians about these incredible superfoods and what they do for our body. So coenzyme Q10 wakes up your mitochondria. And you know, when you're looking just at the aphanosomon on Floss Aqua, you can't simply look at that and say, oh, it's because it's the oxygen ox because it's oxygenating the brain. No, it's also got the amino acids. It's also an intelligent food that goes into your body and finds what you need. So you see, these foods are fantastic foods. There's a food called astaxanthin, which is a, a red algae, and it's absolutely profound. There are so many roots that can do wonders for your body, just wonders, like maca, like ashwagandha, like lotus root, and so on and so on. Well, these things I began researching and discovering as my health improved, and as it improved, and as it improved, and as it improved. So it's kind of like the story of the man with the golden goose. And he's walking along and each person that touches it wants to get the golden goose and so on. They all end up being this big long trail behind him. Well, this is what was happening with me. I would add one superfood and I would go, wow, this is incredible. Then I'd add something else and I'd go, wow, this is incredible. It wasn't an overnight thing. And the first time that I, I told you that I enjoyed these foods so much and so on, but I didn't want to mix uh, income with something so pure and sacred in my opinion so when I was at the Royal Bank in downtown Toronto and it was a very toxic environment it was a closed building with all the air ducts passing the germs back and forth and you know living in the city right downtown in the city with all the smells and the toxins and the pollution and so on it was a very very toxic environment not to mention the stress of the job mm -hmm. so I was seeing people dying around me I was on a project with 10 people and eight of those people became seriously ill some died it was very serious and so people were coming up to me and they were saying what are you doing how are you doing this how is it that you have energy to run around everybody else? You can be in these meetings and you can write notes on the meetings afterwards and you have the whole digested, the whole information that we're just sitting there and it's going over our heads. So I thought, I've got to share this. I've got to, I've got to tell people about this and so on. And, and they wanted me 
to guide them. They wanted me to teach them how to eat it and so on and so on. So I thought, okay, fine, fine, fine. I give up. I will distribute these foods. So I started working with the foods. And the first thing I noticed was that I couldn't just give the people the wild algae, the algae for the brain, which has the cell wall removed, and the algae for the body that has the cell wall. So the alpha and the omega of these foods, I couldn't just give it to them because their bodies were too toxic. So I had to start instead with something that they call essentials, which have two digestive food enzymes. And food enzymes, digestive food enzymes, are another absolute miracle in terms of rejuvenating your body. Because what it does is it unlocks. It's the key that fits in the lock and it just unlocks the nutrients of this wild blue green algae or any other food that you're eating. And then probiotics. So the antibiotics are killing all the good guys and the bad guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And probiotics are pro-life. So you've got anti-life and pro-life. Well, our bodies contain more bacteria than they do cells. So the bacteria are the friendly bacteria. You want to have more friendly bacteria than bad guys. And we always have cancer, but it doesn't get out of hand. So we want to keep that ratio, that balance, just the way that nature in its intelligence is able to do. The homeostasis that I was talking about. The balance for vibrant health and energy. So the probiotics allow you to absorb the nutrients. And it's fascinating what happens because once I learned that, fortunately the people that were working with me, I was coaching for years. I've been coaching people for over 25 years on how to feel wonderfully healthy. And it's always been by their demand not by my wanting to be a coach, a health coach. It's been by demand. So I, that I'm, thing... hearing a, yeah, I'm hearing a number of things. And um, although I'm, I'm very familiar with the field, um, is, is there a, a sequencing? So I, I, I'm coming to you, and based on what you're saying, anywhere from just anti-aging to losing weight because all these toxins make me bloated and then uh, um, I hear say but you can't just take these nice uh, good uh, blue green algae stuff uh, you need to prepare the body like with a, uh, a, a pre-enzyme you know and then a probiotic so it sounds to me, without your saying it directly, Alison, that you have developed a protocol, a system that perhaps in your coaching you help persons to go through. So let's say Andrea comes to you and, um, A, one, my hair is falling out. Two, I, I'm doing everything, but I'm still uh, um, keeping on too much weight. And let's say four, I have absolutely no energy and I've tried everything. Would there be a kind of protocol that you say, okay, Andrea, um, you need to do X and then Y and then C. And then that would lead to vibrant health, elevated mood, and you're by feeling um, many years younger than you really are. Well, the first thing I would suggest, if you came to me with those conditions, I would strongly suggest that you have your thyroid levels checked to see, to verify. Because, you know, you can do tests and so on. And that's a whole other story in itself, because a lot of the tests that they do aren't necessarily the definitive tests and so on. But that's a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I would have you do some blood work and, and find out where you are at so that we can see what you're low in, what you're not, if you choose to do that. Now, there are people ask, that what feel that. What would I ask for? Um, not, to, not to cut you, but I'm telling you, in the Caribbean where I am, unless you are having like symptoms of prostatitis, they refuse to give you the PSA test. You have to quarrel to get the diagnostic, let's say, um, 
you you uh, uterus or um, ovarian cancer tests. So unless you are you are already symptomatic, it's difficult to say I need this test. Okay, so well why not start instead by approaching it through diet? Why not start instead by approaching it through your mindset? Why not approach it through changing the blocks that you contain in your body, the things that are blocking you? We can have traumas in our body that can be lodged in and become part of a heart wall. We can have trapped emotions from trauma that happened as a child. We can carry down traumas through generations and so on. These things can have huge impacts in our ability to heal. We have people that, you know, I heard you say on a hangout that it was really, the treadmill wasn't necessarily the best tool to use and so on for fitness. Well, we have people that are running marathons and dropping dead, okay? Why? Why is that happening? Because their approach is not the best approach for their body. It's not supporting their body in the best way possible. We have people that are drinking wheatgrass juice by the gallon and they're dropping dead. You know, we have different things going on. So it's not a simplistic thing as to say it's one thing, it's another thing, it's another thing. It's a round in integrative health approach. Mm -hmm. It's a holistic approach that looks at every aspect of your health and well-being. It's about creating your own unique individualized blueprint, your own roadmap to success. And it's, it's about you discovering. It's not about me laying down the law and telling you this is going to be the protocol, this is going to be the way we're going to do it. No, it's you taking your own power back into your own hands. It's about you allowing me to be an assistant, allowing me to just slowly guide you in a very gentle way because my journey has been years and years and years, over 25 years of journeying. There are five physicians in my family. They're not the healthiest people. So I have a, med a pharmaceutical rep as well. And, you know, she says I'm a drug dealer, you know, and so many of the physicians and so on are addicted to the drugs that she's peddling and this type of thing. I know that the medical model is failing us. I know that firsthand, and I know that we can create vibrant health, but it's our own body's intelligence. Because you see, there's so much more than meets the surface, Andrea. We are souls. We are so much greater. We are, there's so much more of us that is non-physical. And then there's a par portion of us that's physical. And this is our body temple. This is our body. This is the vehicle that we have to play on this planet, to experience the contrast of life, to experience the good, the bad, the ugly, and to enjoy and to let our, our desires grow and to let our ability to manifest what we want in life grow. We have that capability. That is who we are. We're made of the same things the stars are made out of. We are vibrational beings. We're so much more than our, that the surface, what we look at, what we think is solid. Nice. We're much more than that. That's why bacteria can communicate all across the planet. Right. That's why we have books written like Dying to Be Me by Anita Mojarati, which is just one story of many, 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 many stories. Like your wonderful story, Alison. What I want to ask you though is that if I hear you, I'm listening, to this broadcast and I hear you and I'm moved because something that you're saying resonates with me. And I want to begin to do something different and more in harmony with who I am. I, I, I'm dying to be me. Um, but it's my first attempt. Your journey has been 20 years. What are the kind of big mistakes that you would say, okay, Andrea, okay, and it's okay, woman or man out there, if you're feeling the pull to explore um, this way of being, you know, 
here are a couple of things that you need to look out for. What two or three things um, okay. may derail me? I have given you right here, uh, I've changed my lower third, and I have a lower third that has a, a link to a help out. Mm -hmm. So this is something I have long given up one-on-one -on -one coaching because it got to the point where I was charging seven hundred dollars an hour for coaching because it was I, I didn't I didn't have time to do it and it wasn't a good use of time one-on-one -on -one. but as of New Year's Day I am now making these little sessions mini sessions available to people where they can get started where they can create their roadmap, where they can begin, where they can find out. Because as the host of your Vibrant Health Secrets, I've been working with so many different experts as well that have created wonderful programs to release blocks, to tear down heart walls, to embrace your financial well-being and prosperity and abundance and many, many, many different types in looking at every facet of the diamond. So, you know, that is how I would start. I wouldn't put out just, oh, go do this, go do that, go do anything, you know. And certainly with the longevityrescuer.com, you've got a website there. There's information there. You can always contact me via G+. Plus and so on. You know, I'm very, very dedicated to having everyone in the world experience yeah. optimal health. I'm going to I'm going to push you a little though, Alison, because uh, um I haven't been working in the field as long as you have, but let's say I've been a a, a coach in wellness now for over 17 years. And um, when when someone says to me, "Okay, I I really want to um, increase my level of wellness, uh, uh, decrease my susceptibility to diseases. Uh, what are the three blocks that persons like me normally come up on? Uh, and I would look them in the eye and I said, oh, patience. That's the first thing. I'm going to ask you to be patient because uh, you've been on this journey for so long and you're going to come to me and you're going to say, Fix me in 30 days. I'll start you on the journey and we'll get there with patience. And then I would say to them also, um, the other thing is uh, learn to let go. Let go of your need uh, to be right about all you did before you got to me. And letting go is going to be one of your roadblocks. And I just go through um, a couple and they have found it infinitely useful of when they get to that point. They will say, you know, Andrea, I can't hear you say patience or learn to let go, you know, or, you know, any number of three or four hints or mistakes or um, things to avoid, uh, roadblocks. So are there, you know, it, it, for me, my style is that I'd like to know some of the roadblocks uh, before I embark. So I know whether I'm to wear, you know, a, a helmet or an armor or just go in my sunshine Jamaica clothes. Well, it's different for every individual. I have uh -huh. seen, I have witnessed people turn around their health in a matter of seconds because there's been emotional blocks that have trapped emotions that have caused their ill health and I have seen people that were in very poor states of health uh, be able to walk again and so on so I have witnessed what we would call a miracle but there is no such thing as a miracle I also tell people you know listen you you've you've taken however many years to get your body in the shape now it's gonna take time to get your body back right. so you know I mean there's a lot of different things because people are at different levels mm -hmm. you only go where the teacher resonates with you the teacher comes into your life when you are ready to hear so there comes a time in your life when you perk up and you're ready to listen so the most the thing that I say to people 
more than anything else is love yourself. Learn to love yourself. If you can learn to love yourself, then everything is going to be a downstream flow. Everything is going to go with ease. But if you hate yourself, if you're beating up on yourself, if you have a little mean inner critic, if you feel that you have to be perfect to be good, if you can't embrace and find lightness and joy in your life, that is going to create resistance. You're going to have resistance that's going to crop up in your life, and either way, it's a very strong stream. This stream of life is a very strong stream and it's going to take you downstream whether you go fighting or whether you go with ease. But why not choose ease? So, you see, there isn't one thing that I can say that there are three blocks that block people. There isn't. It doesn't exist. Because we're each unique beings. We're each completely unique beings. The wonderful thing is we can love ourselves, we can realize it's not selfish to nurture ourselves. It's the most unselfish thing we can do because that is how our children learn from us, that is how values and integrity are spread because you're able to give from a place of overflow, not from a place of depletion. You don't have to be a sacrificial lamb. This life is meant to be easy fun, joyous, abundance. There is no scarcity. You're not robbing somebody else's piece of the pie. It's not like that at all. When you come from a place of creativity versus competition, you are creating with joy. It's absolutely incredible what your life, how rich and beautiful and bountiful your life can be, including your health. So this is something that is, there is no set pat phrase answer that I have. It's different for each individual. And it's delightful because when I coach a group of people, people glean from it. They gather from it what they're ready for and what they need. And so that's my approach, plain and simple. Great, great. It has been it has been wonderful um, to listen to you, to listen to your your, your journey. Um, into vibrant health and what I'm taking away from the last thing that you said is hmm, well you first have to learn to love all of you right learn to love all of you um, because that loving yourself um, in fact empowers you and is a path to further discovery and, and, and healing but that you have to be open to finding your individual path, what your blockages are, and what your breakthrough will be. I heard you further say that it's in nature. It's in nature that we will find the answers. In fact, we are one with nature. We're, you know, populated by bacteria. Bacteria is, you know, you know, across all barriers, omnipresent and transcendental, and uh, that uh, nature will provide the help for us, and uh, Alison could be the guide and the conduit through her Google Plus help out. So it has been a, a great, great, great hour. I don't know where the time has gone, Alison. Um, you have given so much, so much, so much information, and a lot of it is just so the, the kind of authentic energy I feel coming almost through the screen from where you are to me right here in Jamaica. Maybe our bacteria is communicating, no, but we're all on that um, vibratory plane. That, that, that connects us. So I really want to thank you for being here, um, expounding on some of the secrets to vital health, um, the vibrancy and longevity that we can take um, into 2014, rather. And I want to give you, Alison, the last uh, two minutes. Oh, Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Um, 
I would just really like very much to express never ever lose hope. Remember, nature has in store for you balance. Nature has in store for you homeostasis, optimal health, fun, joy. And when you realize that fun, joy, and abundance, and optimal health, you are expanding. You are continually expanding. And this is something that the universe, that God energy wants for you, wants expansion. So never lose hope. It doesn't matter what rung you are on climbing the ladder to health. You can always turn it around. Always. You know, uh, this book, Dying to Me, Me, she was in stage four terminal cancer and in a coma and recovered in four days. She was out of intensive care with no cancer whatsoever. So understand that we have so much more healing power than we give ourselves credit for. And approach your life with hope, with appreciation. Count your blessings. There's a reason for that. You have many, many blessings, and the biggest blessing of all is you're alive. So thank you so much for spending some time here with us, and thank you, Andrea, for having me on. Much appreciated. I, 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 I appreciate you. Thanks a lot. So that was special guest, Alison, and um, I want to thank you all for watching, for listening, and invite you to send your comments. I'm going to be posting Alison's help out information. So for those of you who need it, just get it. Thank you. Until next time, this is Andrea, your wellness transformation coach, uh, saying see you again next Wellness Wednesday. Bye.